Call the meeting to order. I'm sorry, we're a few minutes late waiting for my treasure. Uh, should we stand and have a moment of silence uh, and pledge allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Is anyone recording here tonight? No. No? Okay. Uh, then we'll move on with our agenda. Uh, may we have the approval of the Board of Directors minutes of July the 20th, 22. Make a motion. from the Veterans Committee. The holiday season is slowly approaching. We, the committee, are requesting approval for the community involvement of the, of the Marine Corps Toys for Talks annual program. We would like to place drop-off boxes within the administration building as well as the com community clubhouse during the holiday season. What is currently known is that on October 22nd, initiation start date. Uh, as more information is available, we will gladly communicate and share. I mean, they're not sure of the exact date in October. The committee chair has requested that Thomas Freeman volunteer coordinate the program for the community, for the Brookridge community. Primary contact will be Thomas Freeman, and the secondary contact is Gil Lento. Thank you for your attention to our request, the Veterans Committee. And all toys collected for Toys for Tots will be sorted and delivered in Fernando County only. Last year, toys were delivered to, some, to over 3,000 families in Fernando County. I'd like to make a motion to allow Marine Corps Toys for Tots to place drop-off boxes at the administration and the clubhouse starting in October of 2022. Any discussion? No. Um, there's none from the, in the audience. Um, the only thing is, is, is okay. if, if uh, Thomas or Gil are here, Gil, would you like, could you just come up? Once we put out the, the news of you, you got to notice that this is in there. So 
we're going to put the boxes out the 1st of September. This way, uh, they're not toys that are going to be all over the place. So we need to get that. Uh, I know that the, the kickoffs is in October, but uh, we're going to start putting the, the boxes out on the 1st of September. Okay, so you'd like us to change that to September of First, 2022? Yeah. Okay. We'll have to do that. Uh, and is it Thomas that will be bringing the, the Toys for Tots over to the Marine Corps? Is be, yes, Thomas will be responsible, and also uh, Ken Duncan helps out on that. And Ken Duncan, okay. Okay, so we have that. Does anybody on the board have any questions regarding this? I hope everybody uh, gets into this very well, um, with all their heart and soul because this is very important to everybody. Uh, we need to understand that we need bigger prizes for older kids. That's the ones that suffer. The little kids always get stuff, but the older kids don't get it. They need puzzles and whatever. You know? Gil, did you put that in your uh, little article for the yes. use and use about yes, things for older children? Yes, I did. Okay, very good. Okay. As, long as, the, as long as everybody understands that this is, and perhaps you could just put some kind of a list um, at the boxes, too? Well, we can do that, yes. Okay, just so people that don't see the use and views will see that. I understand. One thing is, we do have a challenge. Uh, Timber, Timberland has a challenge that they've got to have more toys than we do. Last year they did. This year we want to be the top of all. Who is that again that's challenging us? Timberland. Oh, Timber Pines. Timber Pines, sorry. Okay, people, let's let's do something about it. Are there any, are there any pick up dates set up for them? No, we, uh, we pick them up, we uh, keep an eye on the boxes of once a week we come up, pick them up. If I happen to be here and I happen to see it, yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, Gil. Uh, another comment? I have a question for you. Up to what age? Up to what age are you collecting? Like 16. 16. Yeah. They stay around that. The seniors, you know, we, uh, we do 16. They stay really tough. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know for all the kids. All right. And we had a lot of bicycles last year, too. So. Those are a little special, and we deal with those separately. But last year, I can't remember how many bicycles. Sally, you remember how many bicycles we had? We had at least a dozen. Had a dozen? Yeah, at yeah. least a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. So they, Sally and Bill, they sort out the, the toys for different ages and stuff. They work over here. And this all happens at the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds has a building for us, and they turn around and they put all the toys in, what they need to do. Then the families themselves go up, and the family, mother and the dad, not the kids, go up and pick toys up for the kids. That's how they do it? Yes, okay. they do it. And sometimes they get three or four toys a piece, depending on how many we have. Mm -hmm. okay. so. Well, that's good. So the challenge is on. Thank it's you. on. That's right. Thank you. We have a, another question regarding that. Yeah, for you real quick. Yes. There, I want to know a good toy for me. Well, from whatever. Is there a, a, a vehicle to give cash? Could I give you some money? Yes. Unless somebody else? Yes. Yeah, she can okay, thank, that. You. Yeah. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I want to know a good toy from a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. I got a good hammer. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a toy. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Gil. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have a um, motion first and second. Comments? Any? I'd like to amend my motion. Okay. Um, I'll, I'd like to amend the motion to allow the Marine Corps Toys for Tots to place drop-off boxes at the administration in the clubhouse starting in September 1st of 2022. I'll stay. Amended motion, first and seconded. Any more discussion? Any discussion from the board? Okay, may I have a show of hands? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carried. Um, we have another one, Gail. I do. 
This is from the Brookridge Social Dance Group. The Brookridge Social Dance is requesting by popular demand to have Johnny Wilde perform here again in Brookridge on Saturday, January 21st, 2023 from 7 to p.m. to 10 p.m. We ask that the monitor schedules be revised to avoid overtime. In July, the venue was well received and we wish to hold this event when our snowbirds can participate. This event will be open to residents and the public. We ask that the board approve the public's attendance. We will be in need of the following times. Decorating the hall on January 21st, 2023 from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The band will be here mid-afternoon to set up. 6 to 10.30 that night for the dance and cleanup. Sunday, January 22nd, 2023, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to remove the decorations from the hall. All of the dates and times have been confirmed available by Patrona Chairman. Respectfully submitted for approval, Richard Stratton, president of the Brookridge Social Dance. I'd like to make a motion to allow the Brookridge Social Dance to host Johnny Wilde on Saturday, January 21st, 2023 at the Brookridge Clubhouse from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. for Brookridge residents and outside guests. Also to adjust monitor schedules to be revised to avoid overtime costs. May I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, any discussion from the board? Um, i just like to say that I know that this was very well received and um, I'm sure it will be pretty booked. <laughs> if, it, if it is not almost booked now, it is. it is. Okay. All right, may I have a vote? All in favor of Johnny Wilde on January 23rd? Uh, raise your hand. I already had a second. Jerry already seconded, Gail. Thank you. <laughs> then you wanted to talk. <laughs> oh, the 21st. No, but over here on the 22nd. <laughs> okay. May I have a vote? All in favor? Raise your hands. Aye. Oh, okay. <laughs> Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Um, this is my president's report, uh, and I want to say thank you all for coming tonight. It's nice to see you all here. We have a pretty nice group. Uh, and we have had a busy month again in Brookridge. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, coastal development, uh, the um, impending change in front of our um, development. Most of you are aware there is a proposed plan generating for development in front of Brookridge. I have contacted the developers and have scheduled a meeting with them to come and inform the residents of their intentions. Meeting will be August the 31st at one o'clock in here. Uh, you'll be getting another notice, but that's August the 31st at one o'clock. They'll be here to um, explain to you what their intentions are. And I just want to make a quick note. Yes, I am doing my job. And as for the la as for the meeting last night, I had two board members at that meeting. Thank you. Liftmaster has had some delays and will be scheduling replacement of the access gates early September. We also are upgrading the DSX system, and that is the barcode system, from 200 to 400. The 200 has become obsolete. Liftmaster will put the upgraded DSX in when they do the gates. The cost is $800 for the DSX upgrade. The staff has started training on QuickBase, and um, it's going to be a lot for them doing their job and trying to get their um, instruction and everything, but they're going to do it. We have a, 
a terrific office staff, and I am so proud of them. They've been doing double duty. We're still looking for a replacement for the front desk, and um, Arlene and Vivian and Norma are, I don't know where they are because they're at one desk or the other, and they're taking care of everything very, very well, and I am so proud of them. Uh, the Finance Committee, we're in our final stages of presenting the 2023 budget on September the 6th. And um, that's about all I have right now to say until later. <laughs> I will mention the fact that um, the ladies of Brook Ridge are ha hosting a luncheon for the entire staff here at Brookridge. It is our way of saying thank you. Some of the men from the men's club will be helping us. So the office will be closed on Friday from 11.45 to 1.30. So there'll be a sign on the door. So they can come up and sit down and have a nice lunch. And so any questions? Uh, I'm in the office every day. If you have any questions or concerns, please call me or come and see me. I'll be honest with you, I don't like to get stuff secondhand. Thank you. Rosemary, may we have the treasurer's report? Treasurer's report, the summary, treasurer's report, summary drive 2022. Operating account ending balance, 237,659.78. Accounts receivables assessments, 215,377.90. VRC fines owed, 68,076.80. And there are currently 29 liens on file. Our assessment income, 136,120.45. VRC fines $1,025 and other income 26,647 for a total of 163,792.45. Operating expenses, uh, administration 19,555.61. Which is 61% of our budget. Facilities $12,918, 62% of our budget. Public Works $17,939.57, 66% of our budget, and $28,000. 866.65 for code enforcement, which is 68%. The total expenses, 79,262.01. Our year-to-date budget, 805.495.95. And there is a balance of $454.100 in our budget. Uh, reserve account, the interest was $113.68. Year to date, $318,990. Our balance is $2,287,481.07. There was no reserve expenses. Donated funds. Capital City, $24,797.55. Reimbursement for Mulch, $71.57. Beautification donation, $692.53. RD Compound donation, $70. Clubhouse donation, $1,500. And the 4th of July expenses were $630. Total paid out $71.57. <coughs>
I have uh, just one comment, Rosemary. When you said that um, our uh, $454,100 was our balance, that's code enforcement. So we need to correct that. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the Treasury's report. And we don't approve the Treasury's report anymore. So, Carol, may we have the general manager's report? Um, basically, all I have is some announcements that are going to be published in the September News and Views. In uh, March, there will be three vacancies on the Board of Directors. Anyone who would like to run for the Board next year needs to submit a resume to the Administration Office. And the deadline to submit your resume is Monday, November 7th, 2022 by 4 o'clock p.m. This will also be announced later when it gets a little closer. If you would like to have your telephone number listed in the Brookridge Resident Telephone Directory, please contact the administration office by phone or you can email us at office at brookridge.com. The admin office has, um, Anna said, will be closed from 11.45 to 1.30 um, for our employee lunch. And I would like to like, thank the ladies of Brookridge for giving us this opportunity and appreciating everything that my staff and their staff does. And just a reminder, on Thursday, August 25th, there will be a COVID drive-through testing from 9 to 11 a.m. in the clubhouse parking lot. Please bring photo ID, insurance, and COVID vaccine card. Okay, thank you, Carol. Okay, do we have any unfinished business? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to stand up now. <laughs> we have been working on a new system at our guardhouse, our gates, to uh, better protect our residents and to make it more up-to-date, more convenient, and safer. Uh, this was reviewed a year ago, Gate Sentry. Uh, if you all received your agenda via the email, you will have a letter that uh, is a summary of Steve Pisano is our advisory chairman, and he and his committee have worked months on this. Uh, we have received three quotes, which you will see on the bottom of your letter. And if you didn't uh, copy that letter, I will read them off to you. Um, our yearly cost for gate entry will be $12,800. For TechWave, which was another system we looked into, was $21,298. Uh, and the dwelling live, which does not meet our qualifications and our requirements is would be $15,574. So we have the quotes, and um, if this passes, we will have an information meeting here in the clubhouse so you all will know how it works and how, it run, how it's going to run. Um, I want to read a, a little, um, and I don't normally go on neighborhood, but I have to pick this up yesterday. And I just bear with me while I read this. So what is the purpose of our bridge? I heard to say, if you have a problem, for an example, you see someone looking around, don't call, call code, call, don't call code enforcement, call the sheriff's department. I used to see a little white security car going around, hopefully checking things out but not anymore. Well, we have trucks now. And what about this being a gated community? Anyone who has your name and address can get in without your permission. What's up with that? Other gated communities mean just that. I'm shaking. You don't get in without the owner's permission. You let the gate know who's coming in ahead of time so they can call and ask if it's okay for them to come in. How, will, how would I stop someone from getting in? This came on neighborhood and 
I'm sure all, a lot of you are on it. But it interested me because going into gate Century, this will eliminate a lot of those problems. You will be able to manage who comes in and who comes out at the gate, comes in and out of your home. I don't know if Greg would like to just give, speak a little bit more about it because he is right up there. You know, he works with them all the time and the gates, and I'm just going to ask him just to fill. And one, by the way, I don't believe we'll have those paper cards anymore either. <laughs> you just give him a little uh, info on it. Basically, with access crashing and we need to replace access, we need to replace the system that is at the guardhouse. Access right now is a system that tracks vehicles. We looked into systems, the Brookridge Advisory Committee looked into a number of dis different systems with the intent of making sure we can track people and not vehicles. We want to know who's here, not what they're driving. Uh, what they're driving is secondary. We will still be able to track that. But a true visitor management system is a system that tracks the pe person or people. And that's what we were striving for here. And the advisory committee was striving to achieve that goal uh, with the least expensive as possible. I'm going to open it. Uh, I am going to make a motion to uh, go with the gate sentry uh, to get a new gate system out there that's going to be more advantageous for all of us and safer for all of us. I make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second. I have a second. Any discussion? Oh, wait, you have to wait for the board. Yeah, any discussion from the board? Um, okay, Jerry. Okay, as, as y'all know, we had a meeting with them last year, and basically the only thing that's changed from last year is the cost part of it has actually been negotiated down from what it was last year. I think it was going to be, I guess, I think it was 28 cents they own. And I think it's way less than that now. Um, but when we had the um, town hall meeting last year um, and they did their presentation of how it worked and all that, now's the time that it actually fits in with everything else we changed the computers out last year now we're getting a new gate and we really need to track people because of what's going to happen with not only with the development out front but um also this makes this makes this makes a huge difference because it gives you the the way to say whether you have uh, somebody coming to your house or whether you don't have someone you have control over that but if you don't you if you don't use it then the system basically stays the same i mean you can stop people in and whatever but they still want to be able to come in if you don't if you don't do anything like it is now so uh, that's what i got to say about it so um now's the time for it to to be Yes. Um. <laughs> uh, last year when we talked about this, there was a monthly fee. Will that still be there? And it will still be $800 a month? No, it would not. Um, Steve Pisano has done tremendous work. Um, he's, he spent months on this, and this, he's supposed to be vacationing up in Wisconsin. Uh, he managed to get our monthly fee down from $750 to $650 monthly. So that is saving us $1,200 a year. I'm not 
Okay, so, so it sounds like this system is going to alleviate a lot of the questions that people have uh, with people coming in illegally, uh, from what Captain Schubert said, it will, it will um, monitor the people that come in. And I believe that part of that system is that people can fill out something to say these are the only people they want there. Okay, yeah, he's shaking his head. So even if you don't have a computer or one of those smartphones that half of us don't know how to use, uh, they, uh, you can still come to the office and fill something out uh, so that if there's anybody, because I know that we do have people in here, residents in here that specifically do not want certain people coming to their home. And this will, this will do that because you can come to the office if you don't have the uh, computer or the smartphone. So this is, everybody has talked so much in the last, oh my goodness, six, seven, eight years about the, and you're shaking, yeah, it's been at least eight years, right? Okay. Uh, about uh, the safety, the true safety in here. So it's, it costs a little bit of money, but it's our, it's, it's our safety. And I think what Greg says makes good sense. Our access is being replaced with quick base. It, a quick base is not compatible to the guard shack, uh, and it would not offer, even if it was, what we, what Gate Century can offer. And I will correct myself, uh, the monthly fee would have been $795. Uh, Steve got it down to $650, uh, which, uh, saves us a good deal of money. So he's worked very hard. Uh, they come up with uh, some concessions. Um, they have a good track, rec a good track record. Um, we want to have a safe uh, place for all of us to live. And with everything planned out front, I think this is the ideal time for us to be thinking ahead for ourselves and our, uh, and our protection. Um, the other thing is, is, and I will quickly mention that, um, sometimes resident gets a violation for, um, say the FedEx truck comes in, and he goes to your house first, and then he goes to two, three or four more. Well, between your house and the next house, he speaks. Well, he comes in and he will give your address first, so you get the violation. This won't happen anymore because you will be conducting that. You will be saying FedEx is coming in today. So we know they're coming into your house. And if they speed between your house and the next house, it's not going to be on you. So that's another safety feature too. So are there any other questions from the board? No. Do we have to announce all the commercial vendors that are coming in? Yes. And how about their names? This system has the ability for the guard house to identify who are actually visitors, who are vendors, who are coming to the clubhouse for bingo, who are home health aides, they will all be differentiated out. So hypothetically speaking, a van with ABC 123 license plate gets a speeding ticket. We're gonna know if that's a home health aide, we're gonna know if that's somebody coming to play bingo, or that license plate was actually for John Smith, who was... No, what I'm talking about is do we have to give the vendor's driver's name to no. the guard? No, vendors, vendors, plumbing, lawn, <coughs> pest control, all that stuff will have a separate list. They will all be pre-vetted in there, and they will be, won't have, well, the only thing that residents will have to worry about is their visitors. Any other questions from the board? 
Are there any other questions regarding Bates entry? I have one here from Mary and Story. Mary Story, Unit 6. Um, I want to be sure I'm understanding you correctly, Anna. The annual cost is going to be the $12,800. In addition to that, we're going to be paying $650 a month. Okay, so what does the $12,800 cover? This, they will all be tablet based, so our guards will have tablets. We will have four tablets. And so it'll be our cost, uh, we have paper tablets for the program. And um, anything that we need, anything else that we need also for the driver's uh, scanning, they will take care of the driver's license scanning, that's also part of it. So a lot of it is software and to set this up. But we will, if we will be using tablets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start, are we going to definitely scan our business driver's license? Because we haven't, take, we haven't even looked at driver's license in seven years, so now we're going to scan them? That's what I'm told. Okay, what happens if a visitor comes to the gate and refuses to let you scan his license, or her license? They won't be able to get in. So you're kind of need, okay, if they have a driver's license or... A lot of people have a Florida resident license, or not license, but a Florida resident ID card. So our residents actually have no choice. We're being forced to have our residents actually scan. I just want to be sure I'm understanding this correctly. Scan your licenses. Not the residents. Oh, the visitors. I'm sorry. You're right, Jerry. I said that correctly. Well, the visitors should have driver's license if they're driving. Yeah. Absolutely. I said what I'm saying is you're forcing them to have their driver's license scanned. They don't, we don't have a choice as residents to say whether or not we want our visitors to have their license scanned. That's, that's different. Okay. Well, can, I just, can I just ask a question, Mary? Yeah. I know that we don't have much time. What is the, what is the downside of scanning? Uh, it's, it's, being, it's being stored in the cloud, all that information, and nothing is absolutely that secure. Any more, you know, anything can be broken into. So the problem is, we have a visitor come down, you're scanning their driver's license, all that information is being stored in that cloud. Okay, and what happens if there's a breach in that cloud? Okay, that cloud? Uh, okay, I got, a, I got a comment on this myself. Uh, if a person comes in and they don't want their driver's license scanned, do you really want them coming in here if they don't want it? Because to me, if they're, if they're not going to give their ID and show their ID to the guard shack, then what are they up to when they come in here? Are they coming to that house? Are they going somewhere else or anything like that? Jerry, there's a difference between them showing their ID to the guard and you scanning and, and keeping their information. We don't look at their IDs right now, which is how we have a sign that says they're supposed to inspect them. But now you want us to have our visitors give you all their information and store it. But you made it clear we have no choice in that. Um, the other question I have is, is this not going to take longer time, especially with the onset of that development going in and the road coming before? Is it not going to take up more time at the guardhouse? It could, at, at the initial. Um, initially, it will take more time. But I think most of us have families that come in and out here all the time, friends that come in and out here once they're in here. Um, I mean, all they do is have to look on their tablet and see, and your account, um, I want Greg to verify this with me, on, on your account, and you say, okay, I'll, I'm going to use me for an example. My granddaughter, Alicia Sherman. She's here in the winter time for a couple of months. So if she's in and out, in and out, and she's on my thing. Alicia Sherman, granddaughter, she's been here all the time. She's 
and I don't have to put her down every time she wants to come in. She comes through, oh, okay. And you're gonna scan the license every time she comes through, is that correct? No. The first no, time. Only the first time. time they come in, you're gonna scan it, and once it's been scanned, first time. it's stored. Yeah. Okay. The other question I have is we used to do 30-day passes. If somebody was coming in here for two or three weeks vacation, it was that yellow pass, you could fill it out. When they pulled up to the guardhouse, they saw it was the yellow pass, they didn't have to go through everything, they could just write, come in again. Are you doing away with the 30-day passes also? Yes. So every time we have a visitor, if they're staying for three weeks, they're gonna have to clear themselves at the visit gate. They, they don't, we're losing that privilege. I said if they're coming in for three weeks. If they're coming in for three weeks, that 30-day pass just to allow them just to go through the visitor's way with no problem. Now they have to stop and have to show their ID and everything else for every day that they're here for the three weeks. No. You know, you know um, now Anna did say that there's going to be a meeting with the people. Yes. It, and, and all of these questions that you have, because I noticed that um, that a lot of people have questions. Mary, I think that these are good questions um, that that the company can really um, give us more insight on because you asked a couple of really good questions. Um, so, because we don't want to take up so much time. You're explaining, you know, asking those questions after the fact, at least by having answers tonight, the residents know what we're facing because if you guys voted in tonight, this is where we're at with it. Okay, and I have one other question, is the fact that in the advisory report there, yes. Mary, is three minutes are out. Okay, I'll let you. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? Okay, Larry Miller. Larry, you need to wait till member comments. Did you didn't kill? You didn't kill out one of these. Oh, I didn't even have the screen. What was the discussion on the floor of the If she, you have to fill out. Yeah. I know what you're talking about, but there was a discussion on the floor. Tuesday she can speak, but Wednesday nights we have to stick with the agenda. I'm sorry, Larry. You remember you were on the board. Absolutely, but I thought you had cleared your business and had opened the floor up. No. No. A lot of people from the floor will speak. One person. And, and that's right. One person. Okay. Mary, can you hold your question until member com until your member comments, please? I have one last question, and I'm entitled to another three minutes. Am I not? As a resident? I'm just going to okay. at the end. <laughs> Mary Story Unit 6, and I'm not sure you can even answer this question. But in the advisory's report, it says one of the essential requirements is that the tablet be able to open the gate after the guard clears the drivers and other vehicle occupants as deemed appropriate. What does that mean, as deemed appropriate? If they look in the car and they don't like what somebody looks like, we're not going to let them in? What does deemed appropriate mean? And that was right out of the advisory report. Is that, um, I know that we do have some language after 10 o'clock at night that um, if people are coming in and, and the other occupants, uh, Greg, thank you, Greg, he'll, he'll know. Yeah, because I'm just saying, but taking it from what the advisory committee wrote and what it was in the agenda. Yeah. Okay. If you have five people listed under, under your name, yeah. you can put somebody in there and then hit a box to say that you don't want them in. That name will come up red on our tablets. So if we see one or two names that are red on the tablet, and there's multiple people in the vehicle, we might ask those people who they are to make sure somebody you don't want isn't getting a ride in from somebody that is on your list. Okay, and then, so that would be involving having to check their license at that point also if you feel people 
Let yes. her, please, yes. let her speak. Okay. And you know, this might be a joke, but this has actually happened. And, it, and it's, the, the license gets stored, it's, a, it's not the license information, it is a picture of the license. That way it is a photo, we can look at the tablet, and for example, we, if you're a visitor, we scan, we take a picture of your license, so we have a picture of the picture on a license, so we can verify that. Oh, well, yep, you're the one who's driving. So it's not going to have their address on. It's not going to have. have any... There will okay. be a picture of the they're... actual license. But they're not going to swipe the magnetic. No, 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 I mean, no. But but they, all the information on their license will be stored in the cloud still. A, the photo. Because it's on a photo. The photo. Okay. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Does that help a little bit, Mary? Somewhat. Thank you. I'm sorry, I did fill out the form, but it was, it was handed back to me because I was told I didn't need it. She said you didn't need it. <laughs> I'm Jean Riley. I live at uh, Unit 4, and I'm a precinct captain for this area and we're going to have a lot of voters coming in so everybody coming in to vote in our precinct as you notice we used to be 25 our precinct has grown to where it goes all the way up to Powell Road it goes from 589 all the way over to Sunshine so our we're going to have a lot of people coming in how is that going to affect our security and I guess Everybody going to have the show ID at the gate and then be given instructions how to get up to the clubhouse here. How is that going to work? I don't think so because it's a county. You don't have any control over that. Kind of thing. As, as I alluded to earlier, there are going to be separate categories. There is going to be a category for the public coming to the clubhouse. Exactly for dances, for voting, things like that, and that's well, where those people will be entered in and kept track of. They are not, those people aren't going to be visitors of residence, so we're able to differentiate the people who are coming in. And are the, the people at the microphone? I was just wondering about manpower, if you're gonna have enough people at the gate to Absolutely. that many people this, in. this is much, much easier than it, people are making it out to me. It's, it's, this, this process at the gate is going to be seconds, okay. literally. Uh, I'm even thinking about like on the 23rd when we have people coming up now. Do you guys have enough for the information? Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mary, there was one thing that Anna said, and um, she didn't realize, because I reminded her, she said that the bid, the, the first year is going to be $12,800. And after that, that's the initial fee, and then it's going to be $650 a month. That's, it's not every year another $12,800 plus the six fifty. dollars But didn't they say, in, in the advisory, didn't they say this is going to go up 5% annually? So is that the 5% on the monthly fee that's going to go up? It could. It could. Oh. Okay, but it's Can't. on the monthly. It's not on another 12,000. It's exactly. on 650 no. a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Gail, for that Okay. Um, may I have a question? Any questions? From the board, any more questions? Chair? No, Lyle? No. Anybody down here? Okay. We have a motion to approve gate sentry for guardhouse and for our protection. May I have a vote of the board? Say yeah. A. Aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion carry. Motion carry. I already voted. They already voted. Why else did you vote? 
Are there any elbows? I've had a rough week, ladies and gentlemen. Motion carry. And we will be, when we get more into 8th century, and we're going to be able to come in and start uh, the implementation, uh, we will be having information uh, meeting here to let you know exactly what it's all about and what your part will be in this. It's going to be much better, believe me. May I have a report of the directors now? I uh, don't you have anything to report tonight. Jerry doesn't either. Leo, Rosemary, Gail. Well, I have my I have the unit reps and uh, all these lovely ladies over here. I think that we have one uh, one one opening. So we, oh, we have two openings, that's right, because somebody moved away. Yes, yeah, so we have two openings. So anybody who's willing to um, be part of the unit reps, it's a good way to start to, to know what's going on in Brookridge and maybe take you into like the BRC. I know, I'm looking at her. I'm looking at her. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good way to, to really know what's going on in the community. And you know, those of you that aren't sure, it's it's to, if you could join them for one. It's the second Tuesday of the month at nine o'clock. Is that right? It's over here at the clubhouse. And I just want to make a comment about the beautification committee. Uh, I've been gone for the last three and a half weeks, so I don't really know what's been going on weekly. But I know that they've been having trouble keeping up with the weeds because it's been so dang hot uh, that they're having trouble getting out there even at seven o'clock in the morning, but we're working on it. I have a member comment tonight. Um, and I'm going to read this, it's very close to me. Several times since I've been elected to this position, I have gotten concerns or complaints regarding staff not doing this, doing that, supposedly outside their job duties. This staff works very hard in their respective position to maintain and make Brookridge the best place it can be for the residents. Maybe we should spend a few minutes thanking them for the work they do and I'm always looking for the frivolous issues that a resident concedes as an infraction of their job duties. We are very fortunate to have the staff we do. Please take a minute and thank them every now and then when you see them. They would really appreciate it. And this is one of the reasons I had a rough week. I want to read something to you again on Neighborhood Watch. Sherry Barnhart has been looking for her dog and she they runs away, it's in somebody's yard, it runs away, they can't catch it. Well, our code enforcement, Peter Rex, he took time out. He took time out to help her look for her dog and find her dog. That's what our staff does. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Any other comments from the members? Gil. Gil. Uh, Gil Lento, Unit 4. Uh, people know that I'm the RV chairman also, RV compound. Uh, one thing I gotta do is tell Greg and his crew, they do a fantastic job rolling around in the compound. I'm in and out of there all the time, and I run into Peter, I run into Greg, I run into Tim. All the time there's always somebody roaming around there, because since we had a couple issues of people that don't belong there, they were just checking things out, uh, we don't allow that. If anybody's in there, the first question I ask, do you have a unit in here? No. 
So why are you in there? Well, I'd like to see what's in there. So please, contact me and I'll take you through. Otherwise, stay out of here. And uh, code enforcement officer has been doing the job and overall, everything seems to be okay. We haven't had any thefts or anything. So please, uh, when you see them, uh, don't give them a bunch of baloney. Let them know that they're doing a heck of a job. Vivian Blair, Unit 4. It's nice that we're getting security with the front gate. We've needed that since we've been here. My concern is the other two gates on Scepter. One of them the kids go to school through. Would it be possible to get a gate for the kids to go to school like we have at the front gate where you need a pass to come in and out of your walking or if you've got a bicycle and that way the gate doesn't get open all the way we need a more permanent gate there we had three golf carts run through there last month stolen so apparently that gate is not secure that should be addressed I feel you know it's just held together with a chain and anybody can just do tin snips and the chain is broken, and that's part of the reason why golf carts get out. I just think that needs to be addressed for a little more security. Thank you. I just have one question with you. Does the, does the chain get snipped? Or the kids, the kids can't be going over because they have to get them out. No, when they got the golf carts out, when they got the golf carts out, they rammed them out, and the chain was broken. Okay. I don't know if they snipped it, they broke it. I don't know the, okay, the whole the detail. Broken. Okay. But if that was more of a secure gate, yeah. you might not have gotten those out. And that's not safe for us in here, obviously, if they can get things out, they can also come in. Thanks, Vivian. The lady just was talking about the gates. Larry that Miller particular unit. gate has Larry two. Miller unit. Yes, <laughs> unit two. Two. I'd already get the first part. <laughs> so anyway, there's two gates down there, and it does have a pass that the kids use to tap on it to open it up and go through. No, that's broken. Well, it may be broken, broken for but, quite a while. but it belongs to the school. Second thing, Ann, you led, led a comment that if FedEx came in here and they speed it, that the homeowner would get a citation. To my understanding, all all commercial all, all commercial does not apply to the homeowner. They get handled directly. And I just don't want people in here thinking a more came in or a delivery guy came in, I'm gonna get a citation. No, they don't. They get it if they have a visitor. Okay, maybe the guy over there can answer it because he writes it. Okay. We had an issue with one of our residents, and I think Greg will agree. He had someone come in to give him an estimate on some shades or something, and he got a violation. Okay. He didn't feel that he should get a violation because it was the guy that came in to. It was a vendor. So we stopped doing that. But it did happen. Sorry. Well, 
sitting on that committee for years, and nobody's advised us. something at my house and they speed three doors down I'm gonna get the fine yeah. that's that, that that can't be possible no that that was stopped not not the FedEx trucks and things like that it was a it was a it was a somebody who came in that was a that was an isolated incident, and Captain Chubik could probably help help us out there to clear this up. Right, but it's not going to happen anymore. Hello? Yeah. He's, let, let's let's let Captain Chubik just explain it to all but of us. It's not going to happen anymore, is it? No, with this new system, it should not happen because no resident should be held responsible for a vendor who is speeding. Part of the problem that we have is identifying vendors. Right now, we take the license plate. We don't know if they're coming to do your taxes or what have you, okay? Um, so violations have gone out on vendors, but we have then close them because afterwards we realize that it's a vendor. What with this new system, they should be separated out as vendors, delivery per people, dominoes, that type of thing, versus your individual guests. So we should not run into this problem in the future. If we do? If you do, you call me and we could sit down and I guarantee you we can get to a Okay. A very good solution. I understand if somebody visits you. Use your mic, Sheila. I understand if my cousin comes and visits and speeds out, I, I'm responsible for that. You are not responsible for a vendor. No, no. I'm saying if my cousin came to visit me at my house mm -hmm. and they left and they sped out of here, then I'm responsible, right? Correct. Correct. And they will no longer be a family resident. <laughs> I like your attitude. Okay. Come on, come on up, come on down. And do I get to pick which door? That's right. <laughs> Linda Walls, before. I have a couple questions on the balance statements. I've highlighted uh, on the July 31st, uh, it says social clubs, bank accounts. Mm -hmm. That would be the donation bank account? No. Mm -hmm. Social clubs, bank accounts. Well, this just started showing up. If you look on the April 30th, it's not there. It's not there. And that's thirty thousand dollars that's been shown added into our income. And we need to find out what that is. Okay. Can I have this copy? That's your copy. I will I will find that out tomorrow and I will let you know. 
also on the second page, highlighted undeposited funds, is that money that's, what is that? Remember, I'm not the treasurer, but I will let you know. I will let everybody know. Okay, All because right. in June it was showing undeposited funds, almost $45,000. There That's a lot of money to be laying around. Transit funds from one month to the other. They just to get posted because I had that same issue with another. Um, oh boy, that's not right. I'm even looking at it right now. <laughs> okay, and then um, the third page. I always do. Yes. Go ahead, Linda. Um, line item 3100, fund balance member activities. Where is that money coming from? Okay, well, just let me find that out, and I will make, um, I will have that for you, but I will also have that at the workshop on the 6th. Yeah. I'd appreciate For the membership. Okay. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Linda, for your diligence. We really appreciate it. Without you and Mary, I wouldn't have any fun. <laughs> <laughs> we try and stay on top of this. <laughs> well, unless you want David to come first, and you and you come last. Yeah, come on, David. Let David come first. Let's have a break. <laughs> Dave Fagan, Unit 1, Vice President of the Men's Club. I'm here to speak in regards to the Men's Club. We, at the Men's Club, is a service organization for the betterment of Brookridge and its members. I want to clarify that. We have been submitting, or I have been submitting with a partner, articles to the news and views for over two years, with no problem. This past year, we've experienced several issues. Last month, for the month of August, our article was pulled. Some of the projects that we run take six to eight months to put together. So we try to give the people as many as much of this as we can. Recently, as of the off, off issue for September, I have approvals from the board, and we understand the rules and regulations that anything with Brookridge residents do not have to have a board approval. Anything with residents outside, we must submit a letter and have board approval. I put together a article stating our function was for Brookridge residents and their house guests. That was pulled. What I'd like to propose is a meeting with some of your officers, some of the officers of the men's club, and the general manager, Carol, so we can clarify this and not have this as an issue down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We'll set up a meeting for that. Thank you so much. Okay, Mary. My turn? Yep. Sashay on up here. <laughs> Mary Story, Unit 6. Um, who actually prepares the treasurer's report? The bookkeeper. Okay. So I do understand that the treasurer's report is a summary. That being said, the the expense items listed on there should be an actual, an accurate total of the expenses for each department, not line items. On the treasurer's report from January to March, the expenditures and year-to-date figures all match. 
Starting in April, the expenditures listed and the year to end figures do not match. Please note on the spreadsheet I gave you, the expenditures for all the, for the departments from January to June is $615,946.60. Yet the year to date figure is $7,800, $7,800, Seven, wait, $780,650.40. The year to date figures are $164,703.80 higher than the expenditures listed on the treasurer's report. Which one is wrong? Is it the expenditures? Is it the year to date figures? If you look at the profit and loss performance report, it appears that the year-to-date figures on that report are the same as on the treasurer's report. Then why are the expenses not lining up with the year-to-date figures? And if your year-to-date figures are off, your percentage of your budget use is gonna be off. And that could be mis very misleading to the finance committee as they are preparing our budget for the next year. Most residents only look at the treasurer's report for financial information. Do the residents not deserve an accurate report in lieu of what appears to be an estimate because the numbers are so different? I'm not expecting an answer from you tonight, but I would appreciate if an explanation of these discrepancies could be made to our residents at the next meeting. Absolutely. I will work on that again. Uh, and I will start with January, even though I wasn't doing this. But I will be happy, I'm happy, Mary, that you brought these. I want to just also remind everybody that we had a change in bookkeepers. Our bookkeeper left early May. Um, she gave very little training to our new bookkeeper. And Vivian does have an accounting background. Um, I myself have spent a lot of time with the finance because, and I'll be very honest, I'm not happy with some of the figures, and I'm not lying to any of you. I don't do that. Um, so I spend a lot of time with that. I appreciate you and Linda doing this. It helps me out, and I will definitely have answers for you on these questions at the September 6th meeting for the membership. I have one other quick question. I know my time is up, but um, last month I had asked you for the line item in administration as to where the sheriff's money was coming out of, and is it cash or check? And you had said to me you'd get back to me, and I have not received that information. It's yet. check. And what line item is it out? It comes out of Arlene. You don't have to tell me. It's actually miscellaneous board expense. That's the line item. So it's in miscellaneous board expense. Okay. But he's getting a check written to him? That's correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay. Jim? Jim Westbrook, Unit 2, I'll be very brief. I asked two questions last month, did not get an answer. I have an answer. Okay. You asked about the forty-nine thousand dollars. Forty-nine thousand shortage. Okay. That was a reserve check that was in transit. It just didn't hit the books until July. I looked into that, and it's I've gone through this whole reserve, and that's what happened. Okay. And and Arlene can verify that. So shouldn't the reserves have gone up by forty-five? It was already in. It was already in there, but it had not been posted. I know you're, you're questioning me about that. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, I'd also ask about the CDs. Ask for how many, how much of the 2.2 million in reserves are in CDs? What is the term of those CDs and what's the rate on those CDs? And when do they turn? Do you get a balance short? sheet? Do you see the balance sheet? It's on the brokerage.com. I've seen it, but it doesn't tell me that it's definitely in the CD and it doesn't tell me what the rate is or when it matures or what revenue. And the reason I ask is, 
We have only had year to date three hundred and ninety dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. The CD of interest that we could get is probably an opportunity for us to get a, either the largest or the second or maybe even the third largest amount of revenue for brokerage because there's a potential to get about $65,000 to $70,000, depending on the rate, depending on the CD and how much we put in it. Um, is it possible to get a listing of what is the CD, when's the maturity date, when did it begin, and what's the interest rate? It seems like a fairly simple request. I, I've asked two months in a row. Is, can I ask not the third month in a row and actually get it? I have been in contact with the bank, and I'm asking them their, these questions. Unfortunately, and I'm back again, I'm honest, OCK doesn't always give us, a, give us our statements every month. We're trying to get them from them. I mean, I spoke with them yesterday. I'll be working with them tomorrow, and I'll be able to give you a better answer when I can collate all of them and get, get back to them. I also want to tell you something else too, Jim. I know you think we can invest this money in 50 different banks, but my understanding is we need to have a checking account before we can invest. So that's another thing. So that's what my that's what I've been told. Wouldn't it be possible to go through a national uh, broker, for example, Ameriprise, uh, it, um, Lynch? Um, uh, we are not allowed to. Never change. On. We can't set up an account. We cannot no. invest in any investment firm. We cannot invest. We can't invest. In, in stocks and bonds, but what about a federally guaranteed FDIC insured CD? The CDs, yes. The CDs, right. that's yes. money markets. For awesome. example, I just bought one about a week ago, six months, 2.75 federal, federally guaranteed. It was a CD, it was as simple as me sending a check and I had it the next day. Boom, it was done. So we have an opportunity. My whole point is. We have 2.2 million, and we're we're missing a giant opportunity to bring a lot of revenue in. And it's ridiculous, in my humble opinion, it's ridiculous that we're not taking advantage of that. My my suggestion would be find a way to make it happen. I'm sure that's not polite. I'm sure that's direct. But there's so much money here. Why don't you come to the office and talk to me about it? Yeah. Okay. As you remember, I offered to help you before, and there was very little interest. So. Okay. And get a boy and come see me at the office. Are there any other comments or concerns? Okay. Anybody else? No? Nobody else? Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn.